In today's video, we are making a log cabin. So folks, we're over halfway in our Behind the Block series. We are on block number seven, which is the log cabin. This is a very traditional block and it's very easy and simple to make. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you example quilts made using this block and there are lots of options. As always, there are two free worksheets in the description below. There is a worksheet with how to make the log cabin with step-by-step -step instructions and diagrams, as well as how to make the log cabin in three other sizes. And then if you're following along and making the entire sampler quilt and you need to catch up, there is a worksheet with all the fabric requirements and all the cutting instructions for every block. If you want to play with colors and fabrics, you can use the link to pre-quilt to make the sampler quilt your own and that's free. And all these blocks are helping us to build our skills as quilters with squares and rectangles. If you've missed any of the videos in this series so far, I will put a link to the playlist in the corner there so that you can catch up. Now this block may look complicated at first, but I can assure you that it's not, and it just takes a little bit of planning and a little bit of labeling. As we're only making one block, we are making this with individual pieces, but there are ways to make this faster with strip piecing, and I'll talk a little bit about that afterwards. So in my version, I have used four colors plus the background color, but you can use as many colors as you like here. You can do it in two colors, three, four, five, whatever you like, it's entirely your choice. It is very helpful when you're cutting your fabrics though to label them so you know which piece goes where. So to make this block, you are going to need in fabric A, a two and a half inch square for the center square, a two and a half inch by 10 and a half inch strip for piece nine, and a two and a half inch by 12 and a half inch strip for piece 10. In fabric B, the blue fabric, you're going to need a two and a half inch by eight and a half inch strip for piece seven, and then a two and a half inch by 10 and a half inch strip for piece eight. For fabric C, which is the green fabric, you will need a two and a half inch by four and a half inch strip for piece three, and a two and a half inch by six and a half inch strip for piece four. For fabric D, which is the gray fabric, you will need a two and a half inch by six and a half inch strip for piece five, and a two and a half inch by eight and a half inch strip for piece six. And then finally for your background, which is white in my case, you will need a two and a half inch square for piece one and a two and a half inch by four and a half inch strip for piece two. Now you will want to label all these, as I've said, with a post-it note or a bit of masking tape with the number so that you don't get them mixed up. And you don't need to worry about writing them all down because they are all in the free worksheet in the description below. When you're making this block, all you need to remember is that you just have to attach the pieces anti-clockwise. And in the worksheet, there's a diagram showing you the layout. With your pieces laid in order, take the center square and piece one, placing them right sides together and then joining with a careful quarter inch seam. And then at the pressing board, you want to press that seam towards the center square. Now we're going to take piece number two and we're going to place it right sides together. And we are going to join that onto the previous piece with a careful quarter inch seam. And then at the pressing station, you want to press that away from that piece. Now taking piece number three, and attaching and remembering that we attach everything anti-clockwise and we're pressing all of our seams away from the center of the block as you can see here. The seams always go away from the center of the block. This keeps it nice and flat. And just be sure to keep referring back to the layout so you know which piece goes where and you don't get turned upside down. You'll see that every time I sew, I use a little piece of fabric. This is called a leader. This is designed to catch any thread balls or tension issues with my sewing machine before I start to sew the main part of my piecing. You can pin these pieces if you like, but I just prefer to adjust them as I sew. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. You will also see me every now and then, I just adjust and check underneath the piece to make sure that my previous seams are not getting stuck on my stitch plate. Sometimes it just pushes them in the wrong direction and I end up with them going the wrong way and not nesting correctly. And you'll see a little bit of that towards the end of this construction. Next, take the next piece, place it right sides together and continue to attach these going around anti-clockwise. I'm using a quarter inch guide on my foot, which has helped me to keep an accurate seam and I just adjust the piece edges so that they meet every time they come down, making sure that those seams are going in the right direction underneath. This is really fast and really simple and takes no time at all to put together.
Again, you can see me here, I'm just checking to make sure that seam's still going in the right direction and it's not been turned around. I love the colours in this block, it really does look great. And here we are attaching the final piece. Pin is required or stop and adjust as you go, whichever you are more comfortable with. And then once we're done, we're going to go to the pressing board and we are going to press that fabric towards the red fabric, away from the centre of the block. So you can see that one of my seams has been pressed in the wrong direction, but don't worry, just get some scissors and carefully snip down to your stitch line. Be careful not to cut through the seam line and then take your iron and press it nice and flat and what you'll see is that one part of the seam is open and the other part is going away and that fixes the problem nicely. And that's the log cabin. So that was how to make a log cabin and it's really simple and it's really easy with just a little bit of planning. Now, as I mentioned we used pieces that were cut to the sizes that we needed but you can make this with strip piecing and what I would suggest is that for the center square and piece number one you can get two strips that are two and a half inches wide by width of fabric, sew them together and then cut that into two and a half inch segments to give you lots of center pieces and then in this case we attached a white strip to the side of that so you can get another two and a half inch by width of fabric strip and you can place each of those segments along the strip and attach them and then cut them up and then just keep going around by doing that with two and a half inch by width of fabric strips and that will allow you to make quite a lot of log cabins at once. I like making lots of log cabins this way it's dead quick and it's dead simple and all you have to do is cut width of fabric strips. Now as I alluded at the start of this video there are lots and lots of layouts that you can make with a log cabin quilt it really is such a versatile block and if you take into consideration that you can play with not only the placement and the layout but also the colours and where they appear in the block you can make endless options for this quilt. So let's take a look at some of the examples I came up with. So these examples are all made just using red, blue and white. I've kept it really simple and all that happens between these is that the layout i.e. the way that the blocks are rotated and positioned changes. There are hundreds of different ways to layer log cabins and lots of different ways to change the colours in the log cabins to create secondary and tertiary patterns. So I would suggest that you go to Google and you have a good look at all the images of all the different kinds of log cabins that you can make. There are even ways where you can alter the thickness of the strips in the log cabin to create different effects and sometimes through the layout it can create the look of curved effects which is really really cool. So in this first one all that we've done is we've rotated them all in the same direction and it creates this kind of cross plus sign shape. And because the white backgrounds are all together, it creates that negative layout. It's a bit like a computer game, this. And these are just placed in a six by eight configuration. So there's six blocks in a row and eight blocks in the column. And you can see that that creates this really nice effect. You could also reverse this and have a dark background to make the blue fabric a light and that would create a negative inverse look that would be really smart as well. The second example is a diamond pattern, I really like this. Again, just by arranging the whites of the log cabins all together, it creates these diamond shapes. I have made two or three of this layout and I really, really like it. You could also alter the blue in the centre and change it to a different colour to create a radiating colour effect. That would be very smart as well. In the third example, I really like this little star. Now that is just made with log cabins still. And then it has all the white background fabric of the log cabins facing into the middle to give the big diamond. And it's really cool. It has a kind of pixelated computer game feel to it, the way that these look. But it's just, it's such a versatile block to be able to do these many things with just by changing the rotation and placement. The next example I think is called the snail's trail and again by cleverly rotating them it creates that kind of mazed look and you could easily reverse the background in the blue to give different looks. You could put different colours in it just so that it rainbow effects as the spiral goes out the way. I just really like how this looks and how it echoes the spiral on the outer sides. This next one, I'm not quite sure what this is called, but it creates this really nice effect. And again, it's just all down to the placement and how you turn these around. I might be tempted to take those centre blocks and change the blue to a different colour, 
the four accents of the center. You could change them to different color as well. So much you could do with this. It's just so versatile. And then finally, this last one is just a bit of randomness. So these are randomly placed to create these kind of almost like pasta bow ties. It just has this really modern feel to it. And again, I'm sure that if you played with the colors in this, you could create some very stunning visual effects. You could even work with ombre fabrics or rainbow fabrics to create a cascading rainbow down this. And again, playing with the inverse version of this, you could reverse the blue and the white to give a different look. It would be very smart that way as well. Or you could also go crazy and have different colors in here, or you could have three or four colors in each log cabin block and really see how it changes that pattern up. But so versatile, these are just six quick examples showing you what's possible with this block. There are so many other things out there that you can do with this. So that was the log cabin block, block number seven in our Behind the Block series, and I really hope you enjoyed making that. Don't forget there are two free worksheets you can download in the description below, and there's a link to pre-quilt where you can color your own sampler quilt. Please share your progress on Instagram with me using the hashtag BTB season one, and tag me, the colorblind quilter, so that I can follow along on your progress and see all your lovely blocks. In the next video, we are gonna be building on our log cabin skills by making the bento box. This is a fun block, and again, with color placement, we can come up with lots of secondary patterns so I can't wait to show you that. If you found this video helpful please do consider giving it a thumbs up and if you want to be notified when the next video in the series comes out please do subscribe and click the bell so you get notified. If you have any questions or any comments please leave a comment below and until next time take care.